Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris FX, and in this third tutorial for Vegas, I'm going to show you how to use BCC Particle Illusion with integrated mocha tracking and masking to enhance your shots. Now if you're new to Particle Illusion or just want a refresher, you should check out my previous two tutorials for Vegas, which go into more detail on the basics of Particle Illusion, as well as using mocha motion tracking to drive your emitters. I've included links to both tutorials in the description and recommend that you check them out when you get a chance. As before, you're going to want to make sure that you have the Continuum 2019 particle emitters installed on your system. It's a free download off the BorisFX website and it contains thousands of incredible emitters. Since we'll be using one of them in this tutorial, definitely give it a download. Okay, so here we are in Vegas and I've added this clip of a father and son having a conversation by the lake. It's a great shot and what I want to do is add an aurora to the background. Now there are two things we want to consider when working with a shot like this. The first is that I have some camera movement and perspective changes. And the second is that I have this mountain range that needs to block some of my aurora. If you remember my previous tutorial with the fireworks, the first thing I want to do anytime there's camera movement is to use Mocha to track that movement. To do this, I'm going to set my transforms to world and launch my Mocha motion tracker. Now in Mocha, as before, I see that I have two trackers available to me. Emitter Offset and World Center. Emitter tracking is only necessary if the emitter itself is physically moving. World tracking is necessary if the camera is moving. Since the Aurora isn't physically changing its position, I don't need to worry about the Emitter Offset. I'll disable it by turning off both the eye and the cogwheel. Remember, Mocha will not track masks when the cogwheel is disabled. The next thing I want to do is find something for Mocha to track the World Center or the camera movement. Now your instinct might be to try and track the mountain range because it's closer to where we want to place the aurora. But that's too large of an object to track, and the pixel colors are pretty close to each other, light blue, dark blue. You might not get a good track. Instead, let's let Mocha track something that's clearly visible for the entire length of the clip. We can work with objects that go off camera, but why give ourselves all that extra work? These trees are perfect. Now there's good, well-defined contrast between the pixels, and they are visible for the whole thing. So what I'll do is I'll move both my world center search area and the world center crosshairs over the trees. Once that's done, I'll hit track forward and let Mocha do its thing. With my track in place, I'll step back out to Vegas and then launch Particle Illusion. Since I've already tracked the motion of my camera, all I need to do now is place my emitter. In the search box, I'll type in Aurora, which will bring up a selection of available northern lights. Personally, I'm partial to the second one, but feel free to pick whichever one works best for you. I'll place the emitter on my stage, and then I want to tweak it a bit, so I'm going to open up the properties. Right now, the aurora is emitting from a single point, but I want to stretch it out across the horizon. So I'm going to change the shape from point to area. This will allow me to grab it and adjust the height and width like so. Let's also increase the zoom and adjust the random seed until it fills the whole sky. And if I play it back, I still have a bit of a problem since the emitter doesn't fully animate until the clip is almost over. But this is an easy enough fix. All I have to do is increase the frames to preload until the aurora fills the screen. This basically jumps the animation forward so that it's already fully emitting when the clip starts. Feel free to tweak the colors or any of the various parameters to give it the look you want, but for this project, that's pretty much all I need to do. So I'm going to save back out to Vegas. But the problem is that while Particle Illusion may understand the movement of my camera, it doesn't know that the Aurora shouldn't irradiate the dad and his kids. The Aurora needs to be blocked by the mountains. To help Particle Illusion learn this, I need to open up my Pixel Chooser Mocha subgroup. And it's here that I'm going to launch Mocha and mask out the mountain range. But here's the thing. I can't just create a mask and track the movement of the mountains. Well, I could, but Mocha is a planar tracker that tracks the movement of a group of pixels, and that's a lot of pixels. So here's how we do this quickly and with almost no frustration. First off, I'm going to disable the visibility of my motion trackers. I don't need to see them for this. Next, I'll draw a small mask around those trees from before. Remember them? Mocha can quickly and easily track them, and they give me a good basis for all of my camera movement. Now I still need to mask out the mountains, and since I'm using Continuum 2019, this is super easy. All I have to do is select my Magnetic Spline tool and click on the mountain range. The Magnetic tool will lock onto the mountains and easily trace the outline. That said, when I get to the trees, my Magnetic tool is going to have a hard time differentiating between the trees and the mountains. So to help it along, 
I'm just going to hold down the left mouse button, which is going to convert my magnetic tool into a freehand tool, allowing me to manually draw a rough estimate of where I think this mask should go. Now I can ignore these trees down here, but this set should probably block my emitter. So if I let go of the left button, Mocha will switch back to the magnetic tool. And with a few clicks, there you go. A very complicated mask, but it was drawn in a few seconds. Now again, this is not something that I want to track. It's huge, tons of pixels, and I'll have to keyframe a crazy amount of points. Instead, I'm just going to select the mask, and then down here, I'll link it to the mask that I've already tracked. My mountain range will inherit all of the tracking data from the original track, and there you go. Now, while this is a very helpful way to quickly track a large area, I can see that it's not perfect. There's a bit of drift because the camera movement changes perspective a bit. Mocha has done a great job of rotoing the shot, but Mocha is really only a roto assistant, and like all assistants, sometimes I'm going to have to go in and tweak things. Now, with my mountain range track selected, I'll move to a frame where I can see some drift. I can drag to select multiple points, and then I'm just going to nudge those points into place. I may have to do this a couple of times, but compared to having to track and move every single point, every single frame, this is a lot faster and a lot easier. Lastly, I'll just save out to Vegas and make one final tweak. In the Pixel Chooser group, I'm going to open up my mass settings and just give it a little bit of a feather to blend those edges. And when I play it back, that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris FX, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris FX website. Take care.